Well, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Today we're going to start a new non-regular series, just a video series that I think I'm going to often come back to, uh, where we're going to take a look at ab about five cards that I cannot keep in stock. Uh, I do a lot of sales on TCG Player, about 50 to 60 orders a day. All of our inventory is available at CavDanesMarket.com. Uh, and these are cards simply that I can't keep in stock, and I want to talk about why I think they are selling and why I think they are good cards to pick up right now. If you are a player that's looking to have cards for the future, this is not investment advice. I'm not telling you that these cards are going to pay for your kid's college in 20 years. I'm just telling you that these are cards that are moving pretty quickly right now. And I'm going to try to give you a little bit of the reasons for that. And then I'm also going to tell you uh, why I think this is a good point to pick them up and why I think they may be going up. Uh, so we're going to do about five cards. We're going to start though with an honorable mention because this card is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong buttons on everything. We're going to start with an honorable mention because this card is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is the Smothering Tithe Extended Art. Uh, this card is, I mean, I can't keep in stock too. I'm not saying that this is the right time to buy this one. I just really, really think this card is incredibly beautiful. I love the artwork. The card, I think that white has gotten better over the last year. And this card is the best white commander card in the world. D give me a better white commander card. D in the comments, give me a better white commander. This is the best white commander card in the game and uh anyway all right let's talk uh no particular order on these cards um these are the cards that i think are really really good to pick up right now if you're looking to uh to play the game and get into the game uh first things first is these these lands from new capenna these triumphs i don't know if they're actually calling them the triumphs but uh these these three color they come in tap they have cycling three lands uh from new capenna um, now, I think these are really, really good picks if you are involved in the game, if you're looking to you know, be able to pick up some stuff. If you don't have copies of these, I think this is a really good time to pick them up for a few reasons. Number one, uh, New Capenna is, it's just, it's for sale everywhere and it's cheap right now. And it, that tells me one thing that, that distribution's not going to want more boxes of it. Currently, distribution has these boxes, collector boxes in particular, uh, on like super clearance. They're like 20%, I think, yeah, like 20% maybe not that quite, maybe like 15% cheaper uh, than when we first pre-ordered boxes as stores. Um, and they're trying to get rid of all that stuff. So um, that is causing a lot of downwards pressure on some of the cards. And uh, I just, what I also think it says is that they're not gonna get more waves of Nuka Penna in. And so this is a great time to pick up these uh, Triumphs. And uh, these Triumphs are, we're gonna kind of take a look at the card and then also look on EDA Trek and on MTG Stocks to show you kind of where they're being used already. Uh, these Triumphs are in a lot of decks. Obviously, there's, I think, five or six versions of them. Uh, but they're being played in a lot. You know, Obviously, they have to be in three-color decks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but they're getting played in a lot of these decks because they're great mana fixing. You can also you know, pay three, basically, to draw a card if you already have all the lands you need. These are great commander cards, and they're pretty cheap, sitting at like an average price of $7. Uh, this, is, this is the all-time low for these cards. They came out a little bit higher. Um, I think this is a great time to pick these up. Again, you don't need a playset of all these. I would just maybe have two copies of them all so that, you know, if you need multiple decks, you've got them, one or two copies. Uh, but these sell really quick. Can't keep them in stock. Um, and they're, you know, they're kind of in a couple other kind of fringier uh, modern decks and maybe even some pioneer stuff. But these are going to be mostly commander staples uh, moving forward, I think. Anyway, great time to pick them up, especially with the discount happening from distribution right now. Uh, the next card, also from New Capenna, uh, Ledger Shredder. And this one really, really leans into this idea that New Capenna will not see a ton more printed boxes. And that eventually, um, you know, this will kind of be the, the number of boxes. And, you know, nobody's opening up these boxes. And that's why cards like Ledger Shredder are going up in value. Uh, Ledger Shredder, though, an incredible card. Uh, Bird Advisor, two costs, flying, one, three. Whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, uh, it connives, which means you draw a card, then discard a card. If you discard a non land card, you put a 1 1 counter on to Ledger Shredder. So, uh, super good card. This card is being used in a ton of decks in Modern uh, and in Pioneer. This is going to be a key point here. I think that Ledger Shredder is going to be, if it has not already become, a absolute pioneer staple and as that 
format gets better and better, this card becomes more and more uh, needed and more and more viable. Um, it's also seen play in modern. Uh, you see it in Is It Murktide and Legacy as well. You're seeing in like four or five different modern decks. Um, so this card is seeing a ton of play and it has already balanced out in price at this kind of $25 price point. Um, <coughs> it's definitely a, a card that I think as the supply of Nuka Penna dwindles, um, it, over the next, okay, the supply of Nuka Penna is massive. Don't like, you know, freak out. But over the next couple months, years, um, this is a card that you're going to see kind of gravitate up. So if you do want to pick it up for some sort of deck or commander deck, or if you're looking to play these formats in the future, you may consider picking one of, or a play set of these up. Now, the thing that will wreck this card is, is if it gets printed in some sort of pre-con or if a play set gets printed in some sort of pre-con, that's the risk that you're taking with this card. Uh, but this one jumped up pretty quick and has been sustained pretty well. Uh, let's take a look at Commander. It's in 5% of the decks. Uh, it's in quite a few different Commanders as, you know, 33%, 25%. Um, I wouldn't say that this is like an absolute amazing commander card, uh, but it's definitely a card that is seeing some play in commander. I think maybe the price point though is something that keeps it a little bit out of uh, tons of commander decks as a, you know, a widespread thing. So anyway, Ledger Shredder, definitely a card to keep an eye out. If you don't have a play set, I do think that picking up a play set slowly over the next you know couple months might be wise. But all right, next card, Walking Ballista. This card is fantastic. This is a staple in magic the gathering it's been a staple for years it just got reprinted in double masters uh this card is great it sells i mean it just like sells instantly it's crazy uh, if you don't know what walking ballista is you pay x twice um so if you pay total of four mana x is two uh it enters the battlefield with x one one counters on it where uh, there'll be two one one counters on it and then you can pay four to put a one one counter on it and then you can remove all of them uh, remove one 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 counter to do one damage. This is a great card for infinite combos to deal infinite damage and commander, uh, even in some other formats. And that's kind of what this is super used for. Uh, Walking Ballista, though, this card I always see it as like a twenty-five to thirty dollar card. Uh, that's kind of where it was when I played the game a ton back in the day. Um, and, you know, and then took my little break, but now as I come back, man, this card's like fifteen bucks. It's like absolutely crazy. It's like fifteen bucks. <laughs> And that's, um, you know, that's a, a huge discount on this. Uh, it's used in Modern and Green Tron and Eldrazi Tron and Prison Tron and Blue Tron. All the Tron decks run this, obviously. Uh, but it's also a commander staple. I would consider this card uh, a absolute commander staple. It's in tons of decks. Um, it's a card that you can really throw into, and it, this is not a bad card. There's not a reason, like, not, I mean, obviously you could put better cards in if you, but this card is used a ton of commanders, my point. But, um, you know, definitely reasons to put it in many, many decks. Uh, which causes the demand for this card to rise and i just think if you don't have one of these yet one or two copies uh this is definitely a good time to pick them up obviously if you're looking to play modern looking to play tron uh you're gonna want uh the the full suite of these in your deck so uh walking ballista not much more to say about it urza saga definitely another card uh i modern i definitely wanted to have a modern horizons 2 card in here because i wanted to talk about modern horizons 2 I just got a pretty massive restock at the distribution level. And uh, so I think that's going to cause some of these cards to kind of drift back down in price a little bit. This might be the last restock. And that's a big conversation that people are having. Is this the last restock of Modern Horizons 2? You know, Modern Horizons 1, we saw for a long time, those boxes floated at like the 160 price range. Then all of a sudden, now the boxes are super expensive. As those, as the Modern Horizons 2 boxes get more expensive the cards in the set will also get more expensive so if you haven't picked up fetch lands if you haven't picked up um you know all those things that are in modern horizons 2 this is a great opportunity a great timeline to get those especially as modern horizons 2 just got kind of a restock at the distribution level so uh that being said i think urza saga is another really great card um obviously this card is seeing a, a quite a bunch of play in modern and a bunch of different types of decks and in a bunch of different decks um this card has always been relatively expensive which tells me that once modern horizons 2 really does go 
out of print and it's no longer available and it gets its last call and um, all that kind of thing. This is one of those cards that's going to really increase in value because it's played in so many decks, even into the legacy and vintage stuff. Um, but I think this card's a little bit underrated in Commander. And, you know, let me know what you think about that statement in the comment section. But this is a card that I think is a little bit underrated in Commander. Uh, it does allow you to search for a ton of your great mana rocks that a ton of Commander decks run. I mean, obviously, you're going to see this in things like Urza um, or things that really run a ton of um, artifacts. But even in decks that just need consistent ramp, I think this is a pretty decent card in that. And I think you're going to see it uh, slot in more in the future as people really figure out uh, why it's important. And I think it gets better every time you get another mana rock that uh, is a zero cost or one. Every, every time you get an artifact that's zero cost or one, this card gets better. And I think you will want to see more play in Commander. So uh, Urza Saga, really cool card. It's also last thing to say about this card specifically. One of those cards that's a little bit difficult to reprint you've got to have urza probably in the set when it gets reprinted so um we don't know what's happening with brothers war but luckily i think you'll have a little bit of time before brothers war actually comes out to see if we see something potentially like this i don't think it's going to get a reprint though uh in that so and again if it does get a reprint look at how much look how much play this card sees like i don't think a reprint's really going to hurt it that much to be honest all right, last card, maybe the best one on this list. I like to save the la the best for last. Another white card, going back to Smothering Tithe from the beginning of the video. Uh, Archivist of Ogma? Ogma? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, creature, two cost. Halfling Cleric, flash, so you can play it on your opponent's turn. Whenever an opponent searches their library, you gain one life and you draw a card. So really, really great. Um, again, a really good commander card as a result of tons of tutoring happening in commander. Uh, this obviously gets to trigger every time they play a fetch land, every time they, you know, play a evolving wilds. Like every time they search their library, you get to gain a life and draw a card. It's an incredible ability. It's also a card that like basically doesn't exist because it's only in like the Baldur's Gate uh, collector boxes and in one of the uh, decks, I think. I think it's in one of the decks. Um, and so it's a card that's really hard in terms of like to, you don't pull it, whatever. Uh, it's also a card that I think lost a, a good bit of value at the beginning because Baldur's Gate did so bad. And those of you who don't, you know, own stores and didn't live this life, Baldur's Gate wrecked us as stores. It was it was really bad. I was opening Baldur's Gate for like three weeks, just trying to like scrap together back the money that I, you know, I still didn't even come close. We have tons of set boxes of Baldur's Gate. Um, and I think a lot of the times when you see a card like this, uh, that initial value gets wrecked. You, you kind of saw it go back up and then it gets wrecked because people just open so much product to try to make their money back. And uh, this is one of those cards that just, I've probably sold, I think I've sold 15 of these. It's crazy. Uh, this is just one of those cards that sells a ton and sells really fast and seems to be a card that lots and lots of people want right now. Uh, you can see like in white again, we're seeing a lot of really good new white commanders and a lot of more interest on the white commander, uh, you know, archetypes. Uh, and so that's going to cause increased um, interaction with this card as well. Um, and it's definitely going to continue to see tons of play in, in that format. Obviously, it's not going to be in any of the other formats. It's just going to be a commander card. But that is the biggest Magic the Gathering format right now. The, the format that's causing the most uh, you know, movement in cards and causing the most play. So I think this card is really good. And I think also uh, we already saw a pretty good uh, like a price decrease in it as a result of a lot of people opening boxes, a lot of stores opening boxes initially on the initial release of this. Uh, and so now, like, what store is going to buy product from distribution to open for boxes, uh, causing this kind of massively to go up? I just don't see that happening. So I think the archivist, archivist of Ogma is a, is a pretty good pick right now. And it's just a really cool card. It's a really good card. 2-2 two, two for 2 with Flash with an ability that really is going to give you a lot of value throughout the game. 
Uh, this is a really, really great card. So let me know what you think of those five or six cards. I would love to hear other cards that you think I missed from this list. These are just cards I, I, I cannot keep in stock. Every time I list them, they sell in like five or 10 minutes. It's crazy how fast they move. Um, so let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to the people around you and we'll see you again next video.